Welcome to LOA Today. Paul Thiessen, Life Coach Tom Wells, and our Doctor of Thinkology, Alex King, here on this Friday, January 11th, 2019. It's 8 a.m. in New York, 5 a.m. in Los Angeles, 1 p.m. in London and Sydney, Australia. It's 12 midnight, but wherever you are in the world, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another podcast episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And the Friday, that's usually a good thing because we're closing in on the weekend. That's yet another way to find that good feeling place. Alex is shaking her head up and down. <laughs> He's ready for the weekend. You got plans, girl? You got stuff set up to do? Or what, what, what's your No, weekend? I don't. <laughs> no, you're just psyched. That's oh, good. yes, I do. No, I, I'm going to see my uh, my BFAM's baby for the first time uh-huh. tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So I'm fantastic. excited. She's, she's so adorable. That is great. Congratulations. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That's yeah. Really yeah. And Tom's just sitting there very quietly, which is very untom like. But uh, what's going on in your life? You have any good stuff going on? <clears throat> yeah, we're getting our uh, fourth uh, little bit of snow for the season oh, <laughs> today, right at right. this moment as we speak. Yeah, we're getting a tiny bit of snow. So I'm really Ooh. excited. <laughs> <Very good. clears throat> Well, this is a, a Q&A in addition to our uh, chattering and having fun and doing good stuff here up on the screen and on the podcast. So if you're listening to the live stream, feel free to punch your questions in. We'll be looking for them. I'm seeing people already checking in saying hello, good morning. So hello and good morning to everyone who's saying hello. And uh, while we're waiting for the uh, questions to come streaming in, we'll get started at our end uh, because that's the way we do things here. So uh, Tom, you you. <laughs> mentioned before the podcast you had already figured out what your first question is so i'm going to go to you first because that's a safe way to go so So what's the first question of the day (laughs) well um how can i have the life i want and feel fulfilled right now rather than always thinking it'll get better in the future what a good (laughs) question Uh, that's the question i I real I deal with that question every single morning. That's I think we all do question. actually. <laughs> how, how can I feel really, really good right now instead of thinking, you know, oh, if only I had this, I could feel mm-hmm. good. I would yeah. feel so much better. Um, and I have to say, my, my answer is the, the thing that I actually do each morning when I'm feeling exactly that way. I get up, uh-huh. I uh-huh. usually have to feed the cats first because they need that kind of instant attention. <laughs> then after I feed the cats, I go <laughs> into this office here where I have a mirror on the wall and I do my mirror exercise. Mirror, mirror mm-hmm. on the wall. Who's the fondest <laughs> Walt of all? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the fairest Walt of all? Yeah. <laughs> And the answer is me. Does the mirror talk to you? Yeah. yeah actually, you it all... does. That's the weird part because you look you yourself go... in the eyes as you're doing it. You know, you're yeah. Talking yeah. While you're doing the mirror exercises, and uh, I mean, the first few times it's kind of funny. It's gotten to the point now where I'm really used to it. And right. It's all I, I. You know what that's like, Alex? Um, do you yeah. Do mirror exercises? You do. Okay. I did them for you know, therapy purposes. They were like, okay, we're gonna try affirmations and all this stuff, and I was just like, it's too weird. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's very weird. But it's like I do them on my own, like in in a weird way. Like if I if um if I pass by the mirror and I'm having a good day, or you know, and yeah. I, I'm just happen to be looking good that day, I'm like, oh, I see you. Okay, mm-hmm. you know. So <laughs> those Absolutely. are affirmations for me. <laughs> Well, that's the whole point, too, because really the, there are a lot of reasons for doing mirror exercises. I mm-hmm. think the biggest reason to do it is to remind ourselves that we love ourselves yeah. and to, to basically build that self-esteem, that confidence up. Mm-hmm. Because when we're feeling confident, to answer Tom's question that he raised, which is a great question, when we're feeling more confident, we have less of a tendency to start wondering, how am I going to feel better by you know, having something else happen to me? And instead, mm-hmm. we replace it with, I'm choosing to feel better which is yeah. you know, a great way to go. So, I mean, Tom, do you have a practice? I, I, I know you don't raise a question while usually having an answer in hand as well. <laughs> you, you well have, today, you have today my, my answer might just be <clears throat> a tiny bit ahead of my question or right there with it. Actually, I was looking in the mirror today too. And really? I said, and I actually said to myself, how could you ever have a problem if you're an infinite being? <laughs> <And> <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> because, you know why? Why would you think that that you got a struggle if uh, 
if you're supposedly infinite consciousness. Mm. So, you know, a lot of ways that's what it does come down to is keep on realizing that every moment there's really nothing else going on except this expression of consciousness. Mm. And uh, that's a pretty – I mean, I don't know if that always works for everybody. I'm I'm certainly playing with that a lot these days, like just like, hey – if I'm if I'm trying to be in the future or I'm worried about the past, it's like it doesn't really exist. It really is only right now. And mm-hmm. so uh, how do I want to kind of just chill and flow with mm-hmm. it and quit bothering myself so much? <laughs> you know, with, with saying, oh, if only I had more money, if only I had the right relationship, if only I had, you know, what? You know, a different health situation. Um, right. And, you know, it's kind of really torturing ourselves to do that, to if only I had, you know. Um, maybe you could say, wouldn't it be nice if, but anything that takes me out of the moment seems to be like uh, a mistake or, uh, I don't know, confusion. So it's really the moment is all I've got. So got to find my peace here. Peace is always there. So. Funny, funny way that we phrase that too. We say now is all we've got, which is true, but it, it almost now is everything we've got. It, it makes it so minimal. It's all, it's all yeah, we've right. got. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> when in fact it's yeah, we have everything in the now. Yeah. That's the place where it's mm-hmm. all at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can explore. A, we can explore a lot in this moment. Um, some mm-hmm. people, that's all they ever talk about is you know, there's these non-dual thinkers and they're uh, they just talk about how the moment is all all that you've got, and therefore, when you when you learn to just totally surrender to the fact that consciousness is all there is, then you quit struggling with anything because no matter what's coming up, it's it's infinite consciousness. And of course, that just sounds kind of intellectual, but it is true. No matter what's coming up, it's infinite consciousness creating it. Oh, absolutely. Um, we can sink way, deeper and deeper into that. Siraj is, is agreeing that mirror exercises and self-talk really work. So apparently he's having the same experience that we've been talking about. And Dee Dee, they do make uh, you feel better. They do, don't you? Don't don't they? Yeah. It's just something. How huh? it it doesn't take long either. It's like seconds. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not even talking, you know, a, like a thirty-minute meditation. We're talking like right. within the first minute. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really feeling a, quite a big difference. And Dee Dee yeah. was pointing out. <clears throat> excuse me. Imagine yourself feeling the joy now, as if what you desire is in your experience. Be grateful that your desire is known and answered by source who is delivering it to you at this moment, which ties in directly to what you were talking about, Tom, living in the now. When you're living in the now, that's where all that's available to us, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. I want to say hi it. to Dee Dee, and I'm glad you're feeling better. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Dee Dee was one of the many uh, things that have gone very well this week. Um, another one being that we're, we – we're sad, but we're happy because Carlos is no longer one of the, our co-hosts, but it's because he's doing so well. <laughs> he's been getting all these gigs, doing commercials and so forth, and building his career in Hollywood. So it, it cuts into his schedule to be able to do the, the co-hosting with us. But, wow, yeah. what a fabulous story that is. And then Dee Dee. What a way to know, go. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And then Dee Dee was, was uh, last week uh, hospitalized, and, and we actually, as a group, on the show that I did with Cindy, we did this like uh, group healing thing and, and all just kind of held her in, in our minds in terms of being in a really good place, a healthy place. And she ended up avoiding emergency surgery. She's out of the hospital. She's back to doing what she does. Wow. And it's like, wow, what a fabulous and Back here with us in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Great. So that was really great. And then um, uh, Alex was also a part of our big news for the week because she's got uh, this this new relationship going on, and she's so excited about that. That's fun. I am. <laughs> oh, it's brand new, is it? Wow. It's brand new. That's great. January first. The part that really reinforces the law of attraction for me is the fact that you are on the autism spectrum with some Aspergers. Yep. He is also, and you didn't yep. know about each other on that before you met. You found out nope. after. You met. Right. That is so- <laughs> That's the law of attraction right there. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. Yeah. So good stuff happening this week, and that—that that just that's another way. I mean, if, I should have thought to, to include that in my mirror exercises today to remind myself. Look at these cool things that are happening. These are really well, great. Well, that's things what that that's what I was going to say to answer uh, Tom's question is is to be to account for what you're grateful for. That's how you you know stay in the now. Mm-hmm. 
that's very, that's true. I mean, when you're counting what they call counting your blessings, you're, yes. you're, you're focusing on the things that are going well and the stuff that feels good. Yes. And that, that's really the battle really right mm -hmm. there. Um, yesterday afternoon, uh, Drew and I were talking about, uh, he, his, his big issue was that um, he, he's trying to get himself organized. He's trying to make lists and so forth. And mm -hmm. I realized pretty quickly his problem was not making lists or getting organized because I mean, the list takes five minutes to make. This is not something you have to spend hours and hours on, right? Mm -hmm. So I realized what, it, what was really going on is he was having trouble connecting with what it is that he really loved, mm -hmm. what he really wanted to do, what was exciting to him, you know? So we yeah. spent the hour talking about exactly that. Mm -hmm. Well, when you, when you have stories like these, or, or like you said, things to feel grateful for, that ties you in directly to the stuff that feels good, the stuff that emotionally excites you and so forth. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very powerful to do that. No doubt about and talk, it. And to talk about the what you want in the future as if it's already happening. Um, mm -hmm. I was doing that last night. I, I try to do that every day for at least 10 minutes. I talk about having the things that I want in the future as if they're already here and how good that'll feel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do that at least 10 minutes a day. And then they say, just drop it, you know, just talk about it. And as if it's all the way you want it and feel into that and then let it go. And it just opens the doors for that to come to you. Unless you By start way, obsessing Alan. about it. <laughs> By the way, Alan, I don't know if you saw, but Dee, Dee was commenting in uh, the comments section. She says, uh, is that why you're glowing this morning, Alex? Oh, it shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm always glowing, darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. But it helps. It helps. <laughs> it does. So now, um, so so Tom came up with a good question today. Have you thought of a good question for today, Alex? Uh, yes. My question is, when did you realize that the law of attraction was working for you? Like, what was the first thing that you realized that you manifested? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. What was the Go back and think one? about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a long time ago for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was only one years old. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about this? How about what, what was the best thing that you manifested? Well, the stick with that first question. It's a good question. I, I think okay. I know what the answer was. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I first saw The Secret in mm. November of 2007. Mm -hmm. That was when I first became aware of the term law of attraction. Mm -hmm. And about two, oh, more than that, about three months before that, I had been to see a doctor about a minor situation. It wasn't any big deal. And while I was mm. there, I had mentioned that I had this thing on my pinky right on top of the knuckle. Mm. And I, I said, you know, is this anything I need to worry about or whatever? And she looked at me and she says, oh, that's a cyst. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, well, you know, is that something to worry about? She says, no, no, most times it doesn't have any kind of problem. It's potential that it could potentially become a cancerous situation, but it's really unlikely to do that. Yeah. But it's also one of those things that won't go away on its own. Um, what you should do is uh, we can do it in the office here. You don't have to go into a hospital or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just a quick surgery, get off and so forth. So, you know, we'll get rid of it and you should be fine. Said, well, thank you. And and I liked her. She was a good doctor and so forth. But I didn't really want to have even that kind of an office surgery. I just it just rubbed me the wrong way. So I had kind of dismissed it. And then I saw the secret. And then a couple mm -hmm. months after seeing the secret, I'm still trying to get come to grips with do I believe this stuff? Mm -hmm. Along lines of what your question is talking about. And I realized, oh, I still have this cyst. I mm -hmm. wonder if I can get rid of a cyst using the law of attraction. Mm. So I decided to make that an experiment. Okay. And the experiment was basically, okay, I'm going to spend like, you know, however long it takes. I'm just going to see if I can just get rid of that, that cyst. So I was just hitting it with gamma rays and I was just saying, you know, go away cyst and the cyst is gone and all this stuff. And it didn't go at all. It just, <laughs> <laughs> just stayed right there. It was, insistent. it was going to stay on my pinky. <laughs> and I said, well, Either this doesn't work or I'm doing it wrong, one or the other. I don't know which. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I rewatched the movie again, the, the Secret, and something in there clued an idea for me. The idea was, well, you want to visualize the way you want it to be. I said, well, mm -hmm. the problem is every time I look at that, 
finger, I see the cyst there. How am I supposed to visualize it as what I want to be if I keep seeing a cyst there? Mm. And then I said, wait a minute, I got another pinky. And I, <laughs> I got another <laughs> pinky. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend that this pinky looks like this pinky. There you go. <laughs> and so that's what I did. I started visualizing that. And then I forgot about it for a couple of weeks. And mm. then I, a couple weeks later, I remembered and looked down, and the cyst was gone. Mm. Like, Sweet. how the heck did that happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was my first experiment with manifesting that actually worked out. And I was just surprised. That I, I, I was amazed that it actually happened, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. I think Tom, I first recognized it. I first recognized it really powerfully uh, when I had this job that I had for 30 years. Um, my, I had my own business uh, buying and selling college textbooks. And um, I had learned back in the 80s or something that if you, if you don't set a goal, you'll never um, reach what you want. You, know, you have to tell the universe that you want something and be clear about it. And before it can actually show up, and that's you know was this old idea called goal setting, and some people still totally follow that mm -hmm. that principle, and so I I I discovered it because I um I was struggling through my day to make a certain amount of money. Like let's say back then I only wanted to make like three hundred dollars a day, and I thought that was you know really good that I could if I could make three hundred dollars a day, and um so I would I would set. I, I, I would struggle and struggle, and then it'd be like noon or one o'clock, and I would realize, why am I having such a hard time? And then I would say, oh, maybe I need to set a goal. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, I'm going to make $300 by five o'clock. And, and then I would just stick to that. I would just keep saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make $300 by five o'clock. And I would start to do it. It would happen. And it would happen mm -hmm. in all these unusual ways. It would be like, wow. How did that happen that I met that person and they turned me on to that person and, and I was able to buy all these books and, and I made $300. And then I found out that every day I would go out to do this job, that if I didn't set a goal, I would struggle. And when I remember to set the goal, I would almost always make it, usually within a few dollars of the goal. So then as the years went on, I kept upping it. I kept saying, well, maybe I can make $400 a day. Maybe I could make $500 a day. And after about four or five years, I was at $1,200 a day, and it went, took it all the way to $1,500 a day. And wow. it was simply a matter of setting the goal. And every, and every day, I, it became like a ritual. As long as I set the goal and then kind of let go and enjoyed my day. I mean, some days I would even sit in professor's office and talk for hours and and then I would I'd walk out of the office and walk to the office next door and make make six hundred dollars, you know. And and I found that oh my God, you know, this thing is it's magic. It's totally magic. It's like you you tell the universe what you want and it gives it to you. And I, I'm a I was amazing, you know, that it went on like that. And and I could say in total honesty of those thirty years, I would say that in ninety. 5% of those days, I made the goal within a few dollars of it. Sometimes it was just like within 5 to $15 of the goal, either one side or the other, just by setting it. And I always said, was this, I must be in the right setting, you know, and, and maybe I could have made a lot more, you know, who knows, mm -hmm. you know, but that's as high, that's as high as I ever got. And then, and then, you know, that, that job just sort of started to end and my source of, college textbook went it went away because of the internet and mm -hmm. so you know i've never repeated that totally in my life ever since then you know be i able to be in a situation where i can set a goal that clearly and then just achieve it but boy did it teach me how law of attraction works you know because i had to go through a lot on those days to convince myself every day to just let go and let the universe do it for me mm -hmm. it was powerful yeah. I, I like that story for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is it illustrates really well the fact that when you're trying to manifest something and you're, you're like this close, the one thing that holds you back more than anything else is your own belief.
So mm -hmm. as you kept expanding your belief, you kept attracting more. You kept expanding your belief and you attracted more. And it, it was like a direct correlation. Every time that you expanded your belief, you attracted more. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's not very often to get that kind of direct, you know, yeah. feedback in that way, right? Yeah. It was really wonderful. And to watch how it would happen so uh, in so many interesting ways, you know, just like that's what blew my mind. It, like how could it – I, like I could be at three o'clock in the afternoon and have only made, um, you know, f five hundred dollars, and and then from three o'clock till four I'd make a thousand. You know, it'd just be like, how the hell did that happen? You know, and, and and on a lot of times on college campuses where it didn't even seem possible, it didn't even seem like I didn't even know where to go on that campus to find any books to purchase, and then something, one thing would lead to another, would lead to another, and all of a sudden I'd walk into a situation, there it would be. You know, it would be like, it was wonderful. <laughs> I just wish I was still doing that in a way because uh, it's such an easy way to live. Yeah, but, um... By the way, we have a, a couple of people who shared their own experiences with what their first manifestations were. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, uh, Didi was, was getting excited about the stuff that we were talking about here and, and expressing it. But more than that, she talked about her own experience. She said, I think I manifested coming out of depression after 20 years. Now, mm. if you're going to manifest something, that's a darn good thing to manifest. That's huge. That's, you know? that's the way to do that's it. That's like, whoa, that's serious <laughs> manifesting going on right there. And then uh, Nasha, who's also checked in to say hello and, and been greeting everybody, she says, I manifested healing my lymph nodes only by reading quantum healing. Hmm. Like, whoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> That, that that beats a cyst any day, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, doggone, that's very good. Way to go, guys. There, there's this book called The Divided Mind by Dr. John Sarno, and he's he was like the lead, he was the foremost authority in the United States on the body mind connection, you know, psychosomatic medicine. He's considered like you know way up there because hardly any any MDs actually believe in psychosomatic medicine, but mm -hmm. he totally does. He totally believes that that mind body connection is important, and he claims in his book that that he's had tons of patients who just by reading his book and learning that there is such a thing as the mind body connection were able to heal their illness. You know because once they realized that they were creating this with their mind the thing went away. Mm. And he, he said that's a huge amount of his, or a large amount of his patients. So I thought that was pretty cool. Just read that the book. That is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Read the book, The Divided Mind, and see if it totally takes care of what you got. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, as you guys were asking your questions, I asked myself, okay, so what's my question to raise? And I think I've got Yeah, some. what's your question, Walt? My question is this, so often we are used to taking our signals from what goes on in the physical world to decide whether we're feeling good or feeling bad. My question is, when we're, especially when we're not feeling good, when, we're not, when we want to feel better, let's put it that way, what do we have to do to make sure that we're focusing on the idea that I can make myself feel good? I don't have to wait for the outside world to make me feel better. I can feel better just by choosing to. What, what's, the, what's the thing that makes that happen? How do you do that consistently? I don't have an answer for that because I struggle with that so hard. <laughs> every, time, every time I have a panic attack, I'm like, well, how can I end this quicker? You know, or, or any time I'm anxious about leaving the house, how can I, how can I fix this? How can I... And I struggle with it, so I don't know. <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> okay, well, that's an honest answer. That's good. <laughs> but let's see what the life coach has to say. Tom, what, 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 <laughs> oh, there's all kinds of little things that I've done. Um, I guess, I guess the main thing I do is I just tell myself that all I've got, or I get, there I go again, all I've got. What I have is this, is this moment, and in this moment, what do I? What do I choose? You know, what what do I choose? Do I want to continue with the level of angst that I'm in, or would I like to back off that level of angst? And it seems like it really is my choice to back off it. Um, I know it could seem like the emotion is stronger than my will to change it, but um, 
I find generally I can I can just allow myself to relax. I, I it's a choice I make. I just say, you know, I don't want to be in this place where I feel this much angst, so I'm going to back off it. You know, like like I'm in control. <laughs> and um you know can practice writing an appreciation journal. I can sit down and close my eyes and, and go into meditation and let myself just chill, be with my breath. That's always a good way. Get into the feeling that's happening in my body and just be with the feeling in my body. Don't race ahead of myself into the future and don't be too much worried about the past, but just be right there with whatever I'm experiencing. And it tends to morph. It you know, If I really just notice the sensations in my body, it'll often just morph into something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Have you noticed yeah. that? Um, well, not specifically with that process. I mean, uh, what, what you were addressing really is kind of what my answer is, uh, which is have processes available that you've used before that you know are effective. So you were describing one just there that was, that's an effective process for you. And uh, I like the advice that Patty Frame of who used to do the Monday afternoon podcast with me once gave me after a podcast when I was struggling with something, she said, um, what, what processes do you like to use when you're struggling with something? And I said, oh, I don't know. I hadn't really thought about it. And she said, well, make a list. Make a list and post it on the wall where you're most likely to see it so that whenever you find yourself in that place where you're looking for uh, you know, the outside world to help you feel better and you know you need to kind of take control of it and make yourself feel better, then you have a list, you can, you have, you've got a go-to list. Just put on that list or even keep updating it over time, the various things that you've learned to do, your processes, your meditations, you know, your nature walks, whatever they are, just make a list of them so that you always have a place to go to to see what the options are. Because that's the hardest part of all. When we're facing, I need to take control of my own emotional state right now. I need to, I need to say to myself, yes, I can make myself, I have that power, I, have that, I can make myself feel better instead of waiting for something good to happen so that I can feel better. And the way to do that is by having that list to go to. Because when you have a list like that, it's like, oh, yeah, you forget. You know, if, if you're in that bad state, you forget that you have these processes. You forget mm -hmm. that they're available to you. But when you have the mm -hmm. list, there, it's like, oh, yeah, I do that, don't I? I you know, when, when I go take the nature walk, I feel better. That, I'm glad I put that on the list, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I liked her idea so much that after I got off uh, the, the podcast with her, I made a list of 22 items. <laughs> <laughs> it's posted on the wall. I mean, it was like, holy cow, I have all these processes, and, and how could I not think of any of them when I'm not feeling good? But that's what we tend to do. So make a list. Make a list of the processes that work for you. And so that way, no matter how bad you're feeling, even if you're in just deep depression, you just go to your list, and you, you just pick whichever one feels best at that moment. I find it's different every time. Sometimes this one feels better. Sometimes that one feels better, whatever. Find the one that feels better and then just do it. And do it even if you're not feeling good about doing it. Just it, pick the best one and do it anyway. And when you do that consistently, you find that the problem of being able to take control of your own feelings starts to dissipate over time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Good advice. I like it. Yeah, it works really well. Now, the hardest part I have is remembering to check the list. <laughs> <laughs> you do have to do that part. There is step one, right? <laughs> it's kind of like what uh, Joel Elston once told me in, in response to a similar question that I posed to him. Um, he says, well, it, it's a really complex formula that you have to follow. I said, oh, what is that? He says, well, step one is to feel better. <laughs> That's the complex <laughs> formula. <laughs> so yeah that's my approach you guys have any other approaches how do you how do you deal with that issue especially now that i've cued your mind alex i mean you said before you didn't really know how to do it what, what, what's your feeling now for yourself what, what's your best thing to do if you're needing to to take control of how you feel i guess reaching out is is how i adjust like uh you know reaching out to a friend of friend or whoever is uh not at work at the moment <laughs> and just call them and and get distracted that's the best thing for me yeah especially if you have the right friends to call the ones who who are uplifting if you got yeah. an uplifting friend boy that's a great kind of friend to call all my friends are uplifting i don't i don't keep <laughs> negative people in my circle so there you go 
There you go. That's a good in 2019. I don't cut people off that are negative. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Canceling them. <laughs> Dear so and so, I'm. I regret to inform you, you have been removed from the list. Good luck. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I, I did that. I did it on Facebook. I'm like, if you're reading this, congratulations, you're still on my friends list. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Wait a minute. I didn't get that one. No, forget <laughs> <laughs> This is before I knew you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So let's see. I'm not seeing any, any any new questions. A lot of people are, are sharing their own experiences, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Siraj just, oh, I have never seen an emoji like the one that Siraj just posted. It's like a sticker emoji. It's like this big laughing, smiling face. Very cool one. I like that. Yeah, those That's are the Facebook emojis. Are. Yeah. So nothing really going on there. So why don't, should we try round two of, of bringing up our own questions? Sure. I know Tom's ready. <laughs> <laughs> The pressure is on. <laughs> Let's see. Can we understand what our can we understand what our emotions are telling us without knowing what the beliefs behind them are? That's a pretty complicated question. Mm. Um, <laughs> you could do an entire show on that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, some people you know, don't talk about changing beliefs. They talk about changing the emotion. But I really think that the belief that you have is really powerful. Um, I started a little book of my beliefs. <laughs> you know, really? a little, yeah, I got a little um, spiral. Well, I had this little spiral notebook. And um, and so on every page, on, on one half of it, I write, I write like on, on one half, the belief that I have, and on, and if it's a belief that I don't want to keep, then on the other side of the page, I write the new belief that I'd rather have mm -hmm. going forward. But I want to start seeing, you know, what are all the beliefs that are operating me, <laughs> you know, like that I'm operating from, because so so many of them are beliefs that I don't want anymore, or that it's just cool to see, like, oh, I actually believe that way about things, you know, and kind of blows my mind some of them. You know, that uh, to good. see like the uh, the Abraham book, uh, the what they call it, the book of positive aspects. Yeah, one of their prospects processes. That sounds exactly like that process because in that one, mm -hmm. they, you, you write down on the left hand side what's not what you're thinking about in the way that you don't want to think about, and on the right hand side, you change yeah. it to what you do want to think about. Yeah, I have the I do that with clients a lot. I mean, it's one of the common things that we work on is a uh, is making a. a two column thing like that and on one side right what are you telling yourself about your life all the time you know mm -hmm. in different the different areas and on the other side of the column you know you leave a space that you're going to write your new better feeling story that you'd rather be telling yourself because a lot of times we keep repeating the same problems in our life just because we keep saying the same thing to ourselves over and over again but a lot of times the beliefs they seem to be subconscious almost like we don't even realize we're running them you know, because they're so we're so familiar with them. We've been doing them since we were little kids. Sometimes, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, like I people don't people don't like me, or I'm I'm not lovable, or however we're saying it. You know, it's usually not we're not saying it exactly like that, but we're thinking something that is actually triggering our getting the same result over and over again. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's good to become aware of what those things are. And I know that's what Seth. You know, Seth is like Abraham. Um, another channeled entity, and they say that it's really beliefs that are behind everything, you know. And if you get to where you recognize what your beliefs are, um, you you can change everything in your life by recognizing what you're telling yourself with your beliefs. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Now we've actually stimulated a question from the from the audience. Uh, Nasha mm -hmm. says, "Certain liars online bother me." How do I deal with them? Delete and block? And Dee Dee, by the way, already has answered it. She says, Dee Dee, yes, delete and block. There should be yes. no room in your life for people's crap. You're not going exactly. to be Exactly. <laughs> Cancel them. <laughs> Cancel them. <laughs> I think it's also more than canceling, though. It's also taking attention away from them. 
Well, if you delete and block, they're out of sight, out of mind. So that's true. That's true. Yes, and and I I certainly advocate delete and block. Um, yes. But you also have to take your attention off of it because if you delete and block and then you sit there saying, oh, I can't believe they did that, you're just attracting more of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to change the mindset too. And, and the mindset has to say, well, they aren't very important. I'm done. What's next? Well, that goes with my mantra. Why do, why do you care though? Yeah. You just got to keep reminding yourself, but why do you care? And then think about yeah. it and then let it go. Yeah. That, that's actually a good point too because if we can notice what it is, why would I care about something like that? Sometimes yep. what will come up is our own little resistance level that we haven't really mm -hmm. thought about before and, and recognize, oh, wow, I've been putting out this resistance on this, this one wavelength, if you will, and I didn't realize it. Well, shoot, now I know what to deal with. Now I, now I just have to release this thing that I've been hanging on to all this time. Mm -hmm. But before I didn't know about it. I know about it now? Cool. Okay. Well, I can release that now. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing as becoming aware of what your what your beliefs are, you know. Yep. Once you know what they are, you can say, well, I don't want to think that way anymore. I think I'm going to mm -hmm. change that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I have the same list that, that Tom has because uh, my therapist gave me gave me basically the same thing, like what what negative thoughts that we think. And then on the other side is what positive thoughts that you can change it to. So, for instance, it's like, um, for I can't do this. And then on the other side, it says, well, try thinking like this. I can do this, and I've done it before. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, that's yeah, on the same line as uh, what Tom does. I like, now I like asking, what. Now, now she's asking you for, for some more help, Alex. Um, she, I'm I, here. I, she posted <laughs> twice. She says, I'm sick of being civil. How do I not care? While you were giving your answer just then. And then she said, uh, Alex, keep on telling me, please. Uh, how do I not care? What's what's your method for not caring? I was I was built that way. <laughs> <laughs> I just give zero f's. Like <laughs> I don't have time. I'm, plus, I'm 35. I don't have time for anybody else's mess. I have my own, so <laughs> I just keep the negativity out of my life. Keep with the positivity and. Yeah, you just you just can't allow people to get under your skin or get into your into your soul. Like that's just I don't know. That's that's disruptive. Like you can't you can't you can't handle it. But yeah, like I said, just ask why do you care? Think about it and cancel the emotion. Keep it moving and delete and block. <laughs> One of the most powerful words in the English language is. Next? No. <laughs> Next? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't like what's going on. Next. Next. <laughs> mm. One of the main principles of sales, of, of doing a sales job, is you got to be able to always say, well, didn't happen at that door. Next. Let me go to the next door. Or it's one somebody of the gives you a bad one of the time. principles of dating. Yeah, <laughs> really, true. dating. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. From the X to the next. And if, if the uh, the difficulty is in letting go, then when you say next, you uh, not just letting go, she used the word civil. If the difficulty is you're tired of being civil, you don't have to say this to their face. Just say this in your own mind. Say next. Right. And don't let the door hit you on the butt on the way out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just, you don't have yeah. to have a full out conversation. I've learned that, you know, closure doesn't always come whether you wanted to or not. So so even if you want closure, the other person may not. So just drop it, let it go, and yeah. keep it moving. You know, I, I find, too, that when I, I – I don't well, – I won't actually say to somebody's face, don't let the door hit you in the butt. But if I say I that would. in my mind – well, I, I know you would, but <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a given. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't want to be uncivil in that way. But I find if I say it within my own head and just mm -hmm. you know, give that smile, you know, like an inside saying, don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out, I feel better. And then I can release it. Yeah. It's my yeah. way of just saying, okay, I can let that go. No problem. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> you <just> sniveling. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, you just have to let it go. And and whatever exactly. way you just let it go, you let it go. I mean, you know yourself a, better than we do. You you know exactly what 
makes you tick when it comes to letting go of something because you've let stuff go, go before. That's probably the best thing to do. Remember what you've let go of before. How'd you do it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. every one of us has a, has a defense like that. We all have some way that we know to let go of stuff. So how'd you let go of stuff in the past? Do the same thing. Yeah. Like letting go yeah. of each, that's like letting go of uh, feeling bad in, in, in any given moment, you know. Can mm. you can you just say next next moment, next moment, yeah. and, and not and not carry forward the bad feeling? You know, it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nasha <laughs> says you do a lot of next, but even uh, next you get sick of next too. <laughs> and I understand that. That's that's what a salesman has to deal with, right, Tom? You're, you, when yeah. You have to do next, 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 next. That, that can be kind of tiring. Well, what you do is you. I, I think you keep putting. When I was doing sales, I would keep getting more excited you know like play the game of um oh i must be getting closer to discovering it if uh mm-hmm. if i if i'm getting all these no's i must be getting closer and closer to a yes yeah you know, mm-hmm. there's there's got to be something in us that's that always believes it seems that things are going to get better you know it seems like that that's a really helpful place to be you know where you, you just say you know well maybe the life is designed to to work Maybe it's not designed for me to continue to fail. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe there's grace, you know, something like uh, like blessing in life. Like maybe it's designed to unfold in a better way if I if I just get my head in that place, mm-hmm. you know, rather than always thinking, oh, it's just going to be one bad thing after another. You know, when when will it ever get better? Instead, we say it's bound to get better. It's going to get better. I'm looking forward to it being better. Mm-hmm. You know. Because if you gotcha. say, if you keep saying, you know, when's it going to get better? When's it going to get better? You're perpetuating the negativity. Yeah. So, right. I, yeah. Because yeah, you don't want to perpetuate that stuff. Yeah, exactly. It uh, is getting better. It, it is. is getting. It is better. It's it is better. already better. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that's even better. Better, better. <laughs> <laughs> it is the best. <laughs> yeah. Nash and Didi were going back and forth uh, in the comments section about it. And uh, <laughs> at one point, Nasha says, uh, I love Didi, like when Alex says, why do I care? LOL. And I answer in myself, what do you know? As in, she doesn't know how, where I live, things are. I wish, and I will know soon. Uh, I think I missed, a lot of, I, I missed part of the comment. But <laughs> basically, she was, she's describing how we play these little conversations in our head. You know? Yes, we do. Yes. And those conversations are what we're trying to kind of get out of, in a sense. So That's why I say you got to say, why, why do you care? Why do you care? And you got to answer it. Yeah. That's the, that's the important part is you got to answer it. I mean, what, like, can you give an example? What's the kind of answer that you've come up with in the past? Well, why do I care? Okay. So I was, there was a guy I was talking to before and, and we ended up becoming friends. So and it was something stupid, like uh, I posted a picture and he didn't like it. And I was like, but why do you care? Why do you care that he didn't like your picture? And then I, I was like, I don't know. I don't know why I care. It's not even that big of a deal. It's not that serious because 30 other people like my picture. So moving on. <laughs> hmm. In other words, by posing the question, why do you care, and then uh, answering the question with, well, I don't know, you were diffusing it. You were taking the, the sting out of it. You were taking the energy out of it. Yeah. Which makes sense, because mm-hmm. the, 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 uh, the poisonous stuff is the stuff that lingers because it never actually gets the light of day. Yes. It never gets exposed. It never gets looked at. And the funny thing is, when we look at the stuff up close, it dissolves in our hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just kind of, oh, why am I so upset about this 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 pile of mud here? And yeah. start playing with the mud, and it just kind of disappears. Mm-hmm. But if you don't do anything with the mud, you just leave it in the in the shadows there. That mud doesn't go anywhere. It just stays right there. <laughs> well, you just go. Why do I care? Because it's gonna rain anyway, so it'll wash away. Yeah. Very good. All right. Let's see. Do we have any other questions here? Uh, lots of conversation. Nasha is saying a bunch of stuff. <laughs> He's saying, well, I'm sick of living for 40 years in a way I 
I care because it hurts me. He says, I care because it hurts me. What do you think about that? I wasn't built with that gene. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have, because of the Asperger's, I have no empathy. So I don't, I don't know how to. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a benefit to Asperger's. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a blessing and a curse because then you're mean to people and you don't even mean to be, but you don't know you're doing it. Mm. You're just, you're just being you. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, I definitely, I definitely have the emotional connection. Like I, you know, I care because I mean, it hurts me. And then I, then I, what I do is I look at it and say, why does it hurt me? What is it that mm -hmm. I want from that person that, mm -hmm. that I would get that reactive to the fact that he doesn't want to acknowledge me? You know, he, he looks the other way when he, whenever he sees me, you know, at these gatherings, you know, there is a guy that does that to me. And, uh, and I'm always wondering, what is it, what did I do to ever piss him off? You know, but then I, after a while, I just said, decided I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend my time trying to figure it out. I'm just gonna let go of the fact that he, that he does it, you know, but it's good to, for me to look and see, why does it push my buttons? You know, like, what is it that I need from him? You know, and that, that's a, that's a good thing for me to, to, to take a look at, you know, mm -hmm. why, why does it push my buttons? Yeah. Just leave an open-ended question. Just leave an open-ended question about it. Yeah. And then life will kind of show me what it is I'm expecting to find from this guy acknowledging me. You know, I want, oh, I really like to be liked. Oh, I, I really got a lot of my self-worth out of somebody liking me. You know, well, that's fine, but other people like you, you it doesn't have yeah, to be that one person. It doesn't have to be that you one person. You've got to remember right? the other people on the list. That's right. Yeah. And recognize also that, you know, that guy's got his own thing going on. Mm -hmm. And I've even had other friends tell me, oh, you know, he does the exact same thing to me. I said, okay. oh, okay. You know, so it's his thing. You know, yeah. he's, got a big, he's got a big hit on ignoring people. Um, yeah. Because he's afraid of something in his life. It's bringing up something for him. So mm -hmm. for me to not take it personally, but it's good because it, it triggers stuff that I know I've got issues there. I know I've got something about wanting to be liked by everybody. You know? <laughs> well, I think we issue. all feel that way. <laughs> yeah. We all want to be loved. There's an Abraham Hicks quote that I like for these kinds of situations. Um, it comes from one of their books. Um, and it's on the topic of basically what you're talking about, Tom, about somebody disapproving of you. Um, not, you know, or, or like what I was saying, they didn't like your picture or something along that line. Um, and it's from uh, their their main book, The Primer on the Law of Attraction. The Law of Attraction, the basis of the teachings of Abraham. It's by Esther and Jerry Hicks. And if you have a copy of it, you can actually find it on page 141. And it reads like this. It says, their disapproval of me is their lack. If there are others who see something in you that you that they do not approve of, most often you see their disapproval reflected back through their eyes, and you feel that you have gone wrong in some way. And we say to you, it's not your lack, it's theirs. It's their inability to be the allower that brings forth their negative emotion. It's not your imperfection. And it, like fashion, if you flip it around, when you feel negative emotion because you have seen something in others that you do not want to see, it is not their lack, it is your own. So when you make the decision that you want to see only that which pleases you, then you will begin to see only that which pleases you. And all of your experiences will bring forth positive emotion because by the law of attraction, you will attract unto you only that which is in harmony with what you want. By understanding the power of your emotions, you can then direct your thoughts and then you will no longer need others to behave differently in order for you to feel good. And I like that. I think it's really I good. I like it too. In fact, Nasha mentioned that she's an empath, and that that's um, that that's where the core of a lot of the problems are for her. And that's mm -hmm. what made me think of that quote, Nasha, because that quote directly addresses the, the empath and says, "Just because you're an empath doesn't mean that you're looking at how people are looking at you correctly or how you're looking at others correctly." Mm -hmm. Just means that you have a strong emotional connection. Yes. Well, you can use that strong emotional connection, but in the context of what's the proper way to understand what's going on here. Whose stuff is this anyway that we're talking about? 
in any given situation is is the is it when you're feeling bad is it your stuff or is it really their stuff and similarly when you're when you're not like what somebody else is doing is it their stuff or is it really your stuff which is it you kind of have to sort that out i think because yeah. if you can sort it out and, and realize what the real perspective is here you're going to find that uh people can't push your buttons as easily right it's not going to work now siraj has a question i want to make sure i get siraj's question in because it's a good one he says what about manifesting an X back? Boy, we see that one a lot in the groups. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> manifesting a what? An, an X. X. Oh, an X back. Boy, do yeah. I get that in coaching? Yeah, that's a that's a common coaching uh, that is a thing common thing that brings clients to me. <laughs> <laughs> being, yeah. Now, now he is listening because he says, um, uh, "Now, should I just use the word next?" Yes. <laughs> they're, an ex, they're an ex for a reason. There was something about them that didn't mesh with your soul. You need to move on. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, there is okay. someone out there for everyone, so you will, you will find that person. There are actually multiple people for everyone. True. I, I think the, the most damaging concept out there is the idea that there's only one soulmate, or what do they call it? What's the latest? A uh, twin flame. There's only one twin flame out there. Mm. And it's absolute BS. Mm -hmm. I no, mean, it's a whole campfire. They're, they're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there are over 7 billion people on the planet, and there can be only one? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just doesn't even make sense. Yeah. You know? that, that's basically saying I am so different from everybody else that no one could possibly like me except for that one person. That's crazy. Well, I mean, that's kind of true because I mean, you are the only you. But it also assumes that as the only you, there is only one other person who could like that you. And that's well, not true. Anybody who's got more than one friend knows that that's not true. Because well, like and like and, and then it. like and love are two different things. <laughs> They're very closely related, though. They are. They are. You know. And, and honestly, I, one of the things I had to learn, and I'm still learning it, I'm learning it better and better, is to blur the, the distinction. Because mm -hmm. we tend to create this artificial distinction in our minds that says, well, there's like and there's love. But what I've come to realize is the people I like, I actually love them too. I just Same. wasn't thinking, I wasn't allowing myself to think of it that way. But I actually do love them. Does that mean that I want to climb into bed with them? No, not necessarily. That's not the point. The point is, right. how do I feel about them? Mm -hmm. You know, if I feel love toward that person, then I feel love toward that person. That's all there is yep. to it. And the more that I'm able to allow that to come out, the better I am, the better off I am. So I, I kind of reject the distinction between like and love. I don't think it's. I don't think. I think it's just more a matter of degree than anything else. I don't think it has yeah. any, any real power beyond that yeah see in my life there's levels so like you have like regular friendship then you have your well no you have your acquaintances then your regular friendship holiday friends fall in there somewhere and then <laughs> and then you have uh your best friends you're like your your circle and then the person you're with and then there's family of course mm -hmm. so yeah. in my life there's levels and you sure. have to work your way up the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> work your way up your ladder of approval. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plus, the other thing that occurs to me is, look at all the people who, um, they have a spouse and the spouse dies. Mm -hmm. Fairly, fairly common occurrence. Now yeah. look at how many of them remarry. Yep. Do you think that all those people who remarried were settling for second best no so clearly you there is more than one person for us otherwise that's they couldn't I, find that other person that's what i said there's a whole campfire exactly, exactly. <laughs> i so like the thing uh, the thing abraham said at one point they said within 10 miles of where you live you know if you live in a metro area there's there's probably <laughs> about a thousand people that you could be in a really good relationship with you know, within sure. 10 miles you know yeah. you know at least a thousand <laughs> and i'm thinking well you yeah, know because what they're what they're saying is that it's really not that hard to is it's all in you you know it's, it's like what you're doing with your own 
um, expectations, I guess, in your own evaluation of the whole situation. That mm-hmm. you got to be easy with loving yourself, and then you can be a lot easy with loving other people. I guess. I guess that's what they're saying. That's the I way I interpret it. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what almost every form of self-limiting beliefs come from. They come from this belief, like you, you just described right there, that you know there's only a certain number of people who could possibly love me. There's there. The, the only thing that could possibly work is, is the person I'm with right now. And if that relationship falls apart, my life is ruined. That's a limiting yeah. belief. Yeah. And those yeah. limiting beliefs are the only reason why we don't find any of those 999 people. <laughs> we decided we're not going to find them. We couldn't possibly find them. There's nobody who could fulfill me like this other person did. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And the moment we say that, then the universe says, your wish is my command. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, stop commanding the universe to say there's only one person for me. Mm-hmm. And you'll find mm-hmm. your experience will change. Mm-hmm. We are our, our own best friends and we are our own worst enemies. We are both. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. <laughs> we and can our love so is ourselves. infinite. It is. That's the beauty of it. Mm-hmm. And it's all happening inside of us. That's what's so amazing. All this mm-hmm. stuff with external friends and relationships, it's, it's all happening inside of us somehow. You know, we're we're the ones that have to find our own peace of mind and our own love of ourselves and our own ease and our own openness, and then we attract that. You know. Mm-hmm. And By the way, Dee is psyched. Dee Dee is psyched. She says, "One thousand within ten miles. Cool." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, get out there, girl. <laughs> it's not start easy. Going, let me tell you. Start going door to door. No, it all it all happens inside of you, though, right? <laughs> Not door to door. Hi, I understand. There's a thousand people out here. I can be in a same relationship with you. Must be one of them. You know what? That doesn't sound right at all. <laughs> Girl, get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That, maybe that's not the best method. <laughs> that's that's not the uh, the way you want to knock on someone's door. Hey, no. I heard I, I can be with a thousand people. You want to be one of them? <laughs> <laughs> it must be some kind of inner attitude that. Yeah, you know, definitely. Some kind of inner attraction that you get so attractive in loving yourself that you're so, somehow you're open to all kinds of people loving you. Yep. And yeah. that's it. Right there. That's why you don't have to go door to door. Exactly. Right. They all come to you. They all come to you. Yes. Right. A thousand people. Man, <laughs> look at all the people out in front of my house. <laughs> yeah. I actually had that kind of not not in terms of relationships, but I had I experienced that in the last week or so when all of a sudden Facebook started sending me all these people who were asking me to be their their Facebook friends, and I, I don't know if I told you, Alex, it has actually accelerated. Yesterday. Has had, it? I had 500 requests yesterday. Wow. Wow. 500 is... friend requests. How does that I'm happen? Thinking, You're going to need an assistant. Some... <laughs> Tell me about it. I'm, You're going to need a Facebook <laughs> intern. <laughs> there is, there's got to be like part of the Facebook algorithm that when you respond to say yes, 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 they say, okay, we'll, we'll find more and more people and encourage them to ask you to be their friend. I yeah. think that's, there's something like that going you on. You really so got I... 500 requests in one day? In one day. Yeah. And what do you attribute it to, the algorithm? I think there's an algorithm that, that kind of keeps track of who are you agreeing to, and then they try to, to encourage other people who fit that same profile, however they figure that out, to ask you, well, here, here's some more people. You know how they, they give you a list? Here's some people who you could yeah, see if we have something in common with. Yeah, suggested friends. So wow. you would just end up on more and more suggested friend lists. So are you saying Never yes happened. to tons of people every day? Not anymore. Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to have 1,500 by tomorrow. <laughs> How many do you have now? How many friends? I, I'm you... actually up above 1,000, which for me is unusual. For me, I, I used oh. to be like around 100. And, oh. and the 1,000, yeah. I didn't feel like they were really friends anyway. You know, so I, oh, yeah. I started putting them back. But um, what I've decided to do now is I'm, I'm focusing on just going through the list looking for, you know, what am I looking for? And mm-hmm. checking profiles out if I see something interesting and that kind of thing. And then yeah. approving those and saying no thank you to the others, being selective about it. So and did you go it. back and unfriend some of the people you had friended? Or? Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? Because you didn't yeah. know them, huh? I've I didn't done know it. them 
and and don't they and, don't they get really uh, don't they get really offended and then they hate you? No, they well, don't they, know that you. They I know, I was offended. kidding. <laughs> oh, okay. Exactly. And even yeah, if they did, oh well, moving on. Oh yeah. well, yeah. next. Yes. next. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ought to have you ought to have all your friends over sometime. That'd be fun. And... <laughs> <laughs> all those twin well, flames out there. Yeah, how many people can we get on blue jeans at once? Uh, <laughs> we can get a hundred on this platform, actually. Really? Oh, wow. God. Yeah, boy, would life be noisy? Yeah, <laughs> but it'll be a lot of fun when it happens. And the pictures yeah, would be really tiny, tiny little pictures of each. Person. Yeah, yeah the thumbnails get really tiny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we lost your picture on this feed. Uh, um, well, yeah, we did. Well, we don't we don't see you anymore. Oh, really? We haven't seen you. Yeah. yeah, we haven't seen you for like a half hour, but we didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, wow. but it's been kind of nice. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I wonder why you went away. At one point, your at one point your picture yeah, froze. There you are. Now you're back. What'd you do? I clicked no? my camera twice, so I clicked it to uh, turn it off and turn it back on. Oh, okay. So I think we found a glitch in the software. <laughs> you had turned it off somehow. No, it was actually on. I, that's why I went to just double check it to see if the camera oh. was on. And what, if yeah. the icon was on, but you're right. The little, you know how there's a little light on. on yeah. yeah. The camcorder, the, the light was off, but oh. the but the button said it was on. So that's okay. why I think it twice. Yeah. So now you're next time, you don't have to wait a half an hour next time. You can let me know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we were just trying to accept that. I was just trying to accept that not seeing you, I could live with it, you know, but it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> yeah, but I got over it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at Alex all the time, and it's so beautiful that I just, oh. <laughs> Look how she's all fixed up today. She's got on her. She does look great today. No doubt about it. As yeah. I dyed my hair. Oh yeah, you went from blue to black. Yes, it's it's my natural hair color. I haven't been my natural, natural hair color hair. since I was sixteen. Wow. Oh, yeah. What was yeah. the impetus behind that? It's the guy. I just I like being star bright. I like to shine like a diamond. So. Well, it's working. Multiple colors all the time. <laughs> Shine on you, crazy diamond. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. That, on that happy note, we're actually over time, so we'll have to draw a close to it. But uh, we have done lots of laughing and lots of enjoying today and gotten some great questions. So thank you to everybody involved. And we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.